Hi there, Dave Huddleston here. I'm going to walk you through the process today of configuring the FileZilla FTP server for the deployment of the Spectralink 8400 series phones um, for the GAP Corporation. Um, you should receive a email from our dispatch department with a link to the uh, template configuration files. Uh, they should be labeled store template.zip. Once you've downloaded those to your desktop, I'm going to right click on that uh, file, uh, do an extract all. Uh, we're going to extract them to the root folder. So uh, you can either select it by hitting browse or hit the uh, backslash key, hit enter. Once that is extracted, you will get a window showing the root folder of your C drive you will find a folder named store template. Once you've identified that folder, you will see inside of it several configuration files for the phones, which we'll address later. Uh, the immediate concern is the uh, install fz.cmd CMD file that I have created that will install and configure the FileZilla server as we need it for the deployment. So you're going to want to right click on that and hit run as administrator. It will then install FileZilla silently. It will open and close the console. It will stop the service. It will apply the configuration. Then it will relaunch the admin console and then restart the service and exit the script and restart the admin console. Once you have completed those steps, we'll just want to verify that the configuration applied correctly. The way we can do that is go to the Edit menu and go to Users. You will notice that there are three users now created, and they are also pointing to various specific folders by user. This shows you that the installation was a success and we are now ready to move to the next step of the installation. The next step will be to locate the phones and remove the battery from the back of the 8400. You will then find a label behind there with a MAC address highlighted in yellow. Please record that in a spreadsheet or notepad so that we can use this information later. Once you have completed recording all of the MAC addresses of all the handsets located at the store in notepad you will now need to begin to prepare the configuration files for provisioning onto the handsets. Navigate to the folder from your root that we extracted the files to earlier. You will find a command called rename. Right click on that, run as administrator. This will automatically open two windows, one located under store contacts store template contacts, the other in the root of the store template. This is where you will need to begin to rename the configuration files with the appropriate MAC addresses. So beginning with the first extension, select the first MAC address copy it, replace the extension with the MAC address. Both locations in the store template and in the store template contacts folder will need to be pasted. You will need to do this for each of the remaining four handsets. Once you 
once you have completed renaming each of the configuration and corresponding XML files, you are now ready to begin to deploy the handsets configuration to the device. You will first need to make sure that your Windows firewall is turned off before we begin this process. Click your start menu, type Windows firewall, and ensure that all of your firewall protection is disabled. Now that we've completed all the previous steps, you are now ready to apply the configuration to the handsets. Let's start by clearing the FileZilla log. Just right click in the console, do a clear all, that'll give you a nice clean window so that we can see any error messages that might arise during the deployment process. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do and monitor is the device manager. So uh, you can uh, launch it manually by typing devmgmt.msc. This will launch your device manager. What we're going to want to pay particular attention to is the network adapters. When we plug in a phone, you will find that it will create a USB Ethernet adapter. So I'm going to do that now so you can see what it looks like in the display and make sure that your device registers properly. You will get an audible tone from the phone and you will then see a USB Ethernet RNDIS adapter in your device manager. If you have a yellow exclamation point next to it, I have included the drivers in the folder with the download of the store template, you can right click on that, do an update driver, browse, and select the appropriate directory in the store templates folder. Depending on your operating system, you will choose either the 32 or 64 bit driver. Now that you've concluded that the driver is installed properly, you can close the device manager. And we're going to focus our attention on the FileZilla console. The next thing you're going to want to do is select the OK button on the telephone, the 8400 handset, go to the settings icon, which is the orange icon with the little gear, select the OK, go to advanced settings, the password is 456, hit enter, Go to Administration Settings, select Reset to Defaults, and then Reset to Factory. It will ask you to confirm, select Yes. You will then begin to see logs in the FileZilla console. This will validate communication to the FTP server and you will begin to see files pushed down to the handset. You will want to pay particular attention to the logs to ensure that there are no password issues or anything like that. Once you the phone has restarted and is back at the home menu you're going to want to go into the settings menu one more time. This time go into basic settings and then scroll down to update configuration. It's going to ask you to confirm. You're going to select yes. You will then see 
in the uh, console that it began the login process. Um, we're going to want to pay particular attention to a few files that are important. Um, the ones that are important are the all zeros CFG file highlighted here. The next one that's particularly important is the wireless.cfg file. During this first provisioning step, these are the two most important files. This is what will get the handset onto the wireless network, which is step one. The next step, once this is completed and the phone has power cycled again, is you're going to probably want to wait just about 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds. And then you're going to want to go back into the settings menu one more time, go into basic settings, and select update configuration one more time. This will now push down the file extension information for each of the handsets. It will ask you to confirm your configuration You will then see that it pushed down in your log the appropriate extension file for that handset. That is where the information for the individual extension per phone is located. At this point, the phone should have wireless connectivity and it all should, should have a handset icon with a green dot showing a successful registration of the handset with the SIP server. You will need to complete this process for each of the remaining four handsets. Each time plugging the handset in, doing a factory reset, Once it reboots, applying the basic configuration updates two times. Once to get the wireless configuration and a second time to apply the SIP configuration.